cows will go from here to here. And maybe turn the corner of this end with a big table right in the middle. And I'd like an extra chair right over there. Maybe a, a matching footrest. Mine. Special. If it doesn't make the room look too crowded. Oh, it's a big room. No, we're going to make this a beauty. Not just this room, the whole house. Pictures on the walls, books on the tables, a lot of mellow old brass and pewter lying around. You can still pick them up at auctions. Oh, sister, you sound lovely. By the way, uh, what color's the couch? I'll leave it up to you. Oh, I'm just beginning to wonder. men wouldn't be this interested in furniture. They just want to be sure that it was comfortable and that it didn't run over the budget. Most men grew up in a home, Betty. I didn't. I've camped out in servants' quarters and college dorms, hotel rooms. This is the first time I've been able to say my home. My home. Oh. Got the deed right here, if you want to read it over. But it's, it's just such an incredible gift. Stephen, y your mother isn't a rich woman. This must have taken most of her savings. Yes, I'm sure it did. If she'd just been a little enthusiastic about our getting married, I could understand, but... I, I must sound like the classic daughter-in-law. You do, a little. If there are any strings attached, I'd like to know about them, too. Right now, I can't think of any. No, I don't mean to sound ungrateful. I know. You're a realist like your husband. We are well matched. Oh, I hope so. Stephen, we can be happy. Why shouldn't we be? <laughs> the facts are in our favor. I'm a good provider. I'll make a good husband and a good father. I don't resent being tied down to a family. That's what I want. My wife? Hey. <laughs> One woman to love. Be loved by for a lifetime. Her children to bear my name. Success and all the solid security and comfort. I said we were well matched. Maybe I should have said perfectly. Some people aren't made for success. The more they get, the guiltier they feel. But we're not like that. We're going to be too busy enjoying life to waste time worrying if it has a deeper meaning. There's only one life that's meaningless. The life you live alone. Never saw a lovelier bride. Yes. Yes, we want you. But he is a beautiful girl, Hannah. And as inevitable a choice for Stephen as his shiny new convertible. Rodney is Stephen's measuring stick for all the good things of life. Oh, that's a cruel thing to say. Why? If you win the race, who do you think is going to ask why you ran? There's no race. Eventually, Rodney will wind up behind that desk at the mill with Stephen at his beck and call. If Rodney winds up sitting at that desk, it'll be because he deserves to sit there. You don't fool me, Martin. 
So I am not in today. I know why you gave Stephen the mill business. It was really a gift to Rodney, a gift of Stephen's brains and ability. Do you know what this mill business will mean for Stephen? When Ted Dowell retires, whom do you think his clients will automatically turn to? Stephen will build up a fine practice. He doesn't need you for that. He could do that anywhere. New York, Boston. Then why did you want him to remain in Peyton Place? Why did you buy him a home here? Why did you give him roots in this town? Because if he stays here, even you, with all of your stubborn blindness, can't help making comparisons. Rodney will go on dreaming, his little boy dreams. He'll outgrow them. And if he's fortunate enough to meet the right girl, he'll outgrow them that much sooner. Anna, don't let Betty's past blind you to her virtues. She has drive and ambition. Precisely what Stephen doesn't need. And what Rodney will never find in Alice. Alison Mackenzie? <laughs> He'll outgrow her, too. Well, Alison must be home. Yeah. With Rodney, see you soon, Alison. <laughs> They're right to point these days, aren't they? <laughs> what you expected to say? Oh, Mother, may I, or something stuffy like that? You know, one of these days, we're going to find a handful of wilted flowers like this, and the message will read, Married Rodney, see you soon. <laughs> oh, no, not Alice. No, she knows her mother's going to do her darndest to outdo this afternoon spectacle. Elliot. Of course, we'll be broke afterwards, but we'll be satisfied, right? Well, would you want her to elope? It'd be cheaper. Well, Eli, you like big weddings, don't you? Oh, I like the champagne. Oh, my head, my head. Uh. Where am I? I hope it lasts. Oh, and Betty and Steve, they go into things with their eyes wide open. They know what they're doing. Sure. It'll last, all right. Just because they know what they're doing? Well, it's better than not knowing what you're doing, isn't it? Did you two know what you were doing when you fell in love? Me and Ruth, we didn't know. We went through the whole mess. Measles, algebra, the depression, and a couple of wars. Now, me and your mother, we never knew what we were doing. But then, she died. And then I knew what it was all about. Love, that's what it was all about. And that's what marriage needs more than just knowing what you're doing. If you ask me. <laughs> Chin, I died here. Stupid to try and forget that. Why are you looking at me like that? Are you sure you want to go sailing? Let's go out as far as we can. Turning blue. I, I don't want to go back to my sweater, not now. Here, put this on. Oh, that great big thing? Come on, a little cooperation. Oh. You're messing my hair up. What hair? This must be too big even for you. Yeah, well, sometimes I walk around with uh, several of my friends inside. It's not very chic, is it? I think I'd rather turn blue. What if I fall overboard? I'll sink to the bottom like a stove. Like a warm stove. Gosh, it's pretty. It's like a picture postcard. You know, you read about people who just 
Just pick a spot and go. They don't care how long it's going to take them to get there. They just go. I wouldn't care. You know, the trouble with me is I'm always thinking about the practical stuff, like uh, passports and provisions and what to do about money. If you think about those things, you'd never go at all. Yeah, I know. It's just a dream. It's a good dream. You're going to teach me to be a dreamer. You're going to teach me, Rodney, about living. Preview from the continuing story of Peyton Place. We don't know anything about each other, except that we love each other. Don't let the past hurt us. It was a wedding. A real wedding. The kind of wedding I always dreamed of giving you. It's my life. Now, I've got to do things my way. I know what I want, and I'm not looking for advice. <laughs> <laughs>